Hi team, welcome back. This is Smoking Steel Garage and today we're going to be talking about vision on track. I'm going to give you a tip that will hopefully help you to improve your positions in the races and reduce your risk of spinning, crashing and just failing to finish the race altogether. This is a tip I learned around 12 years ago at a professional driver simulation center in Silverstone. It was a complete game changer for me. I'm going to share that secret with you today and hopefully we can make you all better drivers. Let's get on with it. So what is bad vision and why is it such an issue when we're trying to drive fast on track? Well, unfortunately, in the day and age we live in, we've become a smartphone society. Our vision has gone from looking out over the horizons 20 or 30 years ago to looking just a, a few inches in front of our face. And as a result, we see a lot more drivers coming to the tracks and to sim racing now that just aren't looking far enough forward. You've got to remember that 95% of the time, most of us are driving on the road day in, day out, and we're sticking to a 60, 70 mile an hour speed limit, in some cases 30 mile an hour in the city. So we're only looking a few meters in front of us. And that is our natural safety zone. That's our buffer. That's where we feel comfortable. But when we step out onto the track, we can be driving up to three to four times faster than that speed. But we're carrying on looking in that same safety zone. So we need to start looking further forward. Now, signs of poor vision are feeling generally overwhelmed when you're driving on track. You feel like everything is just happening too fast for your mind and body to keep up. You start to feel stress, you start to feel uneasy, erratic, and you have a great deal of inconsistency. You feel like you're always making inputs into the car through corners. So let's talk about reaction times at these kind of speeds. If a car is traveling at 70 mile an hour or 112 kilometers an hour, it is traveling 31.5 meters Per second. Now, the average human reaction time is between 200 and 250 milliseconds. In the time it takes you to react at 70 miles an hour, 112 kilometers an hour, you are traveling 7.8 meters. Now, let's just let that sink in for a bit. Or if we want to really simplify it, it's around one and three quarter car lengths. By the time you've reacted, You've already gone past the point of no return. Any mid corner corrections that you make also result in a loss of grip, which then in turn reduces the speed of your car. So this is why vision is so important. The further we look ahead, the more time we allow ourselves to react for our reaction time of 200 to 250 milliseconds to kick in to send a message to our hands or our feet that make the adjustment. You see where I'm headed here. So we're out on track today. It's Silverson International. We're in the Porsche 992 and we've got a really good corner at the end of the hangar straight stow corner. Um, so it's quite a nice long open third gear corner, high speed. So it's a really good corner to practice on working on your vision because Silverson being quite flat. You can see most of the way through the corner and even on a, a single screen, you'll be able to work on improving your vision. So what we'll do is we'll, I'll drive down and now we're gonna talk you through the corner. So the break in, the turning point, the apex and the exit and where I'm looking at those specific points or just before. Um, then I'll come down, I'll do a, a lap at speed with my vision down and show you the problems that we encounter and then we'll do another couple of laps uh, with my vision lifted up. All right, so coming down here, um, we know in the 992 for Stow Corner, the breaking point is around about 150 meter board just afterwards. If you're suffering from poor vision, what people tend to do is, is lock in on their four points individually. So. First up is a breaking point. So the, the pinpoint of their vision is at 150 meter board. 
and it's not until they reach it they switch to the next part of the corner which is the turn in point and then they do that again so they lock into that until they get there or until they make the inputs turn in and then they switch to the apex now what this leads to if you watch the steering wheel when they turn in because they're so far behind the turning becomes very erratic and they have to make minor adjustments in the car mid corner and this scrubs off speed it loses grip which means you can't corner as fast which means ultimately you're slower now also this can lead to problems with inconsistency missing apexes so lifting off having a break um, and he's all unbalanced the car and if you watch my other video on car balance and i'll pop the link up in the uh, up in the corner here to that one um, that'll tell you why that's a bad thing as well so what happens is we come down to the 150 what we're going to try and do is be looking far far ahead now we've got to sight our 150 breaking point but we're actually going to use peripheral vision we're going to train our peripheral vision so as we come down we can start to pinpoint the 150 but straight away we're going to be looking for our turn in point which i believe here is just after the 50 board so we're going to be looking there and we're also going to be eye lining just a couple of little quick pushes of the eye over towards roughly where the apex is so that we're giving our brain enough time to work out the radius of the corner and how much steering input we need to put in but we're not going to be staring at that 150 board until we're right on top of it we're going to use our peripheral vision to side out that 150 meter braking board so at this point here we're moving our vision up up to the just far past the 50 board for our turn in point and we're braking 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 getting the car slowed down and now already my eye my eyesight my pinpoint is going to be moving across the screen towards the edge of the screen so if you're on a single screen here you can still see roughly where the apex is and it's just behind the barrier over on the uh, right hand side so my vision is swinging across over to that apex point i'm using my peripheral now to judge my turn in but because i'm looking at the apex i also have a better indication in my mind of how much i've got to turn that wheel into the corner and i remember with uh with stow corner we're still braking deep all the way into the corner so we're still on the brakes slowing the car down bringing it in gently and before i've got to the apex i've switched my vision and then i'm working out where the exit point is i'm looking for that exit point even before i've got to the apex because as soon as i've got that in my vision i know the car's headed there as soon as i'm pinpoint sorry new mic as soon as i've got the car headed and i know it's going to make that exit point i can get on the power so what you'll find is this vision technique you'll be able to get on the power a lot harder and a lot more smoothly than you can by just staring at the points and uh, moving on to the next one as you pass them so i'm on the exit point now and i'm looking 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 over at the edge of the screen and now i can see it i'm on the power i can just see the white line of the curbs in front of me and i'm hard on the power driving it out now stow corner typically it is a hot spot for one x's but using this technique not only are you going to be able to get into the corner quicker because you're going to be able to break a lot deeper into the apex but you're also going to be able to get out the corner faster because you'll find you'll be able to get on the power more consistently and smoothly instead of lifting on and off all the way out and making adjustments it'll just be one progressive sweep onto the power but also you're going to find your exits are a lot more tidier and you get a lot less one x's coming out so there we go right i'm going to go to do a lap now all right so this is going to be a lap with me absolutely zoning in target fixation on my brake in turn in at apex points so I'm looking at that 150 board, I'm just zoning in on it. And now to the turning point, now I'm looking for my apex and I'm off the power, on the power. Found the exit and I'm out of the corner. But you can see lots of minute corrections, on and off the throttle, steering's jolty, cars moving around, it's really unbalanced and it's all because my vision everything is going a lot faster for me it feels 
really quick but it shouldn't feel like that it should feel very calm and very smooth and it's because my vision is so short that my brain is rushed because it's having to process the information as far as it can but i can only react at 200 to 250 milliseconds that is my reaction time so it doesn't matter how much i try and, and make adjustments and inputs and changes i can't i'm always behind i'm always behind the curve what we need to do is raise the vision give ourselves another half a second 300 milliseconds of time in hand to react and everything becomes a lot smoother my brain goes from being overworked to just nice and calm and chilled and at the same time we're actually going to go quicker all right so let's go down we're going to lift our vision now so at this point here i'm already zoning in on that 150 board i know where it is and i'm looking straight up to that 50 board that's my turning point so there we go and i'm turning in now looking for the turn in the apex and now i'm looking for the exit before the apex on the power and out nice and smooth all right already i'm looking for that 150 board so that's done i know where that is that's in my peripheral now now i'm focusing in on a turn in and i'm looking over to the apex as well so into the apex looking for that exit and then on the power now you can see the difference you can hear the difference okay so now we're coming down for the fast lap so we're coming down now i'm looking at the 150 and at this point i'm straight up to the turning point so i'm not even focusing on the 150 anymore that's in my peripheral vision so my pinpoint now is at the turning point and i'm also going to glance across to roughly where i think the apex is as well so i'm i'm already figuring out that radius in my mind how much i need to turn the wheel so so we're focusing on the turn in point i'm at the breaking point now or just on top of it and as soon as i get to breaking point i'm switching to the apex so now turn in point is on my peripheral vision and i'm looking hard over on the screen nearly to the edge of the screen if you say i was on a single screen i'll be right on the edge of the screen now searching roughly where that apex is turning in using my peripheral and i've got my vision locked in on that apex and now i'm scanning for the curb on the exit so i'm scanning 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 the corner of my screen just making tiny tiny inputs i'm on the apex now nice and tight on there a bit too tight and i've picked up you can just see now on the edge of the screen the white pixels which mark the curb for the exit so i've picked that up i made a little adjustment and now i'm hard on the power out towards the exit we've got a nice exit using all the grip in the car and using every inch of the track that's the difference between picking your vision up and then driving 20, 30 meters in front of you. His way, my way. I was six seconds faster. So there you go. Hopefully this has helped you out. Now, like I said, I learned this in a professional driving simulator and I've used it on track in real life in my racing career. This is a technique that most professional drivers use. You'll see F1 drivers and aliens looking completely off track, like into trees before they go down um, into a corner. So they're already figuring out the exit point of the corner before they even arrive at it. They're looking, as they're going down a straight, they can be looking into a tree line on their right or left-hand side, figuring out the radius of the bend before they even arrive at the breaking point. Um, if you want to see some of that, search for eye tracking F1 drivers or eye tracking of race drivers on YouTube. There's a million films out there, but it is amazing that, that these guys aren't even looking in front of them. Some of the problems you're going to run into is it is like anything. Um, it's very, very easy to slip back into your habit, back into that little comfort zone that you've got of driving every day. So this, although you can force yourself to do it for a couple of laps you will find that you'll steadily start to creep back into your old habits it takes a lot of work and a lot of training to keep this going and you're going to need to as well it's really easy to go out and just do one lap doing it and go wow that was great 
over time you will find yourself just sinking back into your normal safety box so just keep chipping away at it start steady don't try and overwork yourself don't get angry if you can't do it straight away just take your time with it and keep pushing 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 and working on your vision and it will eventually get better now it's really really easy to do when you're on track on your own and there's nothing else to look at it's just you on the track it gets a little more difficult when you're in the middle of a pack of cars but again this is where laps and track time come into play keep prompting yourself as you race looking forward looking forward looking forward what i've done with some of the drivers i've worked on um, is as we approach a corner i get them to count down so four three two one so as we're on the approach number four is the is the exit point number three is the apex of the corner number two is the entry and number one is the break point so what we do is i prompt them four three two one you're coming up to the uh, breaking point so at four they look over to the exit of the corner then at three they're looking to the apex at two they're looking for the entry point and then one break point and then they work their way back up as well so they go four three two one two three four hope you, that helps you understand please do like this video if, if it has helped you or if you think it's it's a good uh, little tip um feel free to leave a comment below if you've got any problems in sim racing that you'd like me to look into um it's really hard for me to try and think there's, there's quite often there's some really basic things that we just forget about over time so if you're struggling with one particular area um drop a comment down below and maybe i can look into it and we can we can help you out it might make a pretty cool interesting video for other people out there good to be back on the sim it's been a while three months this sim is filthy i will be getting my polishing cloth out and giving this sim a damn good cleanup anyway have a good time and we'll see you again soon thanks for watching bye bye